So Year 11s, our time has come to an end. This is just a short overview of the very last task that you will ever have to do in Year 11 history and for mystery. So sit back, put your feet up and watch and learn what is going to be on the exam, what is going to be expected of you and how you can smash and get your final great grade. Good luck. So for those of you who don't already know, your exam will be held next Thursday. It is an exam which goes for 90 minutes. Um, you will also get 10 minutes reading time. So you need to be here at about quarter to nine because your history exam goes from nine to 10.40. So you will enter the room. When you enter the room, please make sure that there are two booklets on your desk. One booklet will be a different color and one booklet will be white. The white booklet, will be your question booklet and the colored booklet will be your answer booklet. So quite clearly, the white booklet is where all the questions are, the pictures, the written document, the multiple choice questions, and your answer booklet is where you put your answers. So if you don't have two different colored books on your desk, you put both hands up and say to the person who's running your exam, hey, get me my two colored books. All right. So the history exam will be broken up into three sections. Section one will be 30 multiple choice questions. I will give you a Kahoot, a link to it. And if you have a go at the Kahoot, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, out of those 70 questions in the Kahoot, 30 of them will be in the exam. So have a go at the Kahoot as part of your preparation. The visual document will be section two. And later on in this little lecture, I will show you the picture, talk through the picture, and it'll be up to you on the day to pick the major parts out of the picture and dissect it. As well as section three is a written document. So again, in this little lecture, I will give you a preview of what the written document is. Um, we will, I'll read it to you and hopefully you will understand what it's asking and I'll ask you to find words and phrases in the exam. So how are you going to be examined? What topics are actually going to be tested on in the exam? Okay, we have spent a semester together and in this semester we have done topics one through to seven. You have learnt about dictators and totalitarian regimes. You have learnt about why people were happy with the Nazi party at the start, so what they did with the economy and getting people back to work. We then explored how Nazi Germany turned into a terror state and effectively became a police state where the police and the Gestapo and the SS, obviously they were the two police groups, how they started to... Um, spy and intimidate and how they started to control people within Nazi Germany. We then briefly had a look at what propaganda was and how the Nazis used propaganda to definitely spread their messages but also to spread messages, wrong messages, about the Jews and other undesirables. We then, um, you were made to walk around the room and look at all this diff different information on Hitler Youth and you all had to fill out a brochure, which I'll be returning this week. So you'll be tested on the Hitler Youth Movement, what they were trying to get out of young boys and young girls. Then what we're focused on entirely this term, which is how did World War II bring about the Holocaust? So why did Hitler want to go to war? Which countries did he invade and occupy? And when he invaded and occupied these countries, how did they lead to the mass murder of Jews and other undesirables? And then lucky last, through our Holocaust journal and of watching Schindler's List, you have been able to explore the persecution of the Jews and the undesirables. So you've been able to look at how they were harassed and intimidated and how violence slowly seeped into their lives until we get to a system where the governments of the nations that the Nazis have occupied will systematically move them out to concentration or extermination camps. And then we've looked at what life was like in the camps. So those are your topics that will be explored in the exam. So once your 10 minutes reading time is up, you will simply open up your question booklet um, and you will find that section one is multiple choice questions. At the same time, um, as it says here, you must circle the correct option from the multiple choice page located on page two of your answer booklet. So you'll need to open up your answer booklet to page two. As you can see on the right here, um, I've got all the pages labelled, so two of seven. So you open that to go next to your question booklet. 
And what you will be doing is you will have 30 multiple choice questions to answer. As you can see from the page one that I've basically, or the first page of the multiple choice questions that I'm allowing you to see, is you will see that it's quite clearly um, what's in bold and black is the question, followed by you have four choices. So you would read question one, what is a dictator defined as being? You'd read all your options and you would go across to your answer page and you would circle what you believe to be the correct response. Um, so there are 30 questions, which means that every topic will have about a minimum of four to five questions on it. To help you in your preparation, I can't stress and hint enough, but I created a Kahoot for you, and this Kahoot is called the 20th Century History Examination Preparation. It is a Kahoot that has 70 questions. Of these 70 questions, 30 will be in your exam. So I will share this link with you on our Facebook group page and in your preparation for your history exam, this is the one thing that you should definitely do. Do this and you can go in really strong for the multiple choice section of your exam. Now section two and section three of your examination paper will test you in your capabilities of analysing a visual document. So as you can see, we'll test you in your ability to analyse um, a political propaganda cartoon. And in section three, we'll test your ability to analyse here we have a diary excerpt from an inmate from Auschwitz. So this is testing your ability to analyse documents. So let's begin by looking at section two, the visual document analysis. So remembering that you'll have your question booklet and it'll be open to this page, so section two visual document, you'll be able to see your political cartoon in front of you. You'll also be able to see that there are three questions that I want you to answer in relation to what you see in this political cartoon. You also would be wise to turn into your um, answer booklet and go to the page where it has section two visual document analysis, which are located on pages three and four of your answer booklet. And you can see how much I want you to write. Okay, so A and B are short and swift. However, question C is where I want you to extend yourself. So the aim of the exam is to fill in as many lines as you can using what you're seeing in that picture and your own knowledge. Um, so obviously you get closer to the 10 marks or the 15 marks, the more that you write. So I'm not gonna go entirely through this cartoon because that's the point of the exam. I want you to pick out um, what you see and what you think is um, happening. However, I'll go through the questions to make sure you understand um, what I'm wanting you to answer. Okay, so question A is using that cartoon, only this cartoon, only the picture that's in front of you. Identify and briefly explain two Nazi beliefs held about Hitler as represented in this document. So looking in this document, looking at everything that you can see. So in the distance, you can see that there is land, okay? There's a big, huge mel um, mountain. In the skies, we have planes, military planes. Right next to Adolf Hitler, we have a young boy probably representing a certain movement. He is holding a flag which is symbolic of the Nazi party. We have Hitler front and center. So this is all these things. What do these mean? What beliefs and ideas are the Nazi party putting out about Adolf Hitler with all these little elements and suggestions in this cartoon? We have Hitler with his hand raised. There is shining light above him. We have an eagle which is glistening past him and going over his people. To the left of him, we have women who are throwing up their children and their arms and they're crying and they're bowing at his feet. Over more to the left, we can see that we have the military in the back to the right near the mountain. We also have the military marching. Then we have right at the front, we have workers. So all you need to do from all those elements is identify and briefly explain two Nazi party beliefs held about Hitler that are being suggested in that picture. Question B is identify two movements or organizations that are represented in this document and describe how they've been displayed and portrayed in the document. So looking at that image, 
I can already see that there are several movements or several organizations or groups that are in this picture. So it's up to you to, to identify two of these movements slash organizations or groups. So when you're talking, for instance, one movement would probably be the person that is right next to Hitler. What sort of movement was that? How is that movement represented in this document? How are they being portrayed? What's it showing their relationship to Hitler? Um, what's their actions? Describe their uniform. What's their stance? What's their positioning? Is there any objects that they're grasping? So that's one movement. Then we've got, obviously, who's marching in the background? Who do they represent? Who do the people to the left of him represent? Who do the people to the right of him represent? But remember, you only need to comment on two of these movements or organisations. And lucky last, response C. By referring to the document and everything that you know, briefly explain what benefits and positives Hitler and his henchmen promised and gave the German people. So looking at that image, what is being sold to the people as being a positive as having Adolf Hitler in power. So using everything that you see in that picture, write everything that you know about the good things that the Nazi party brought to Germany. Okay, and here we get to the last section of your examination paper. So again, open up, you'll be in your question booklet and you need to obviously find the page which has section three written document analysis and we have a diary excerpt and you also go to your answer booklet and go to pages five and six. And again, you can see how much I'm expecting you to write. If you are aiming to get a very good mark, you will aim to fill the space. So first and foremost, the last document I'm testing you on is written. Okay, so we're not looking for elements because it's not a picture. We're looking for key words and key phrases and the emotions that come out of it and the tone of voice and all that sort of thing. So first and foremost, it's a diary excerpt from an inmate at Auschwitz. So it's from, it's a primary source because it's taken from someone there at the very time that this event is occurring, obviously the Holocaust. And a diary is obviously their personal emotions, feelings, their observations. So let's read first and foremost what this person has written. I saw prisoners killed with shovels. I saw dogs attack inmates. I knew why you had to work with your head down, why you always had to run, do better, go faster, because the SS killed us to spur us on. There wasn't any shortage of us. Death reaped our ranks constantly. Slowing down at work, death. Carrying too light a load, death. Chewing a bit of food, death. They created another kind of time, the arrival of the trains. I carried clothes to the sorting lot, helped the men to undress. I carried sackfuls of women's hair from the huts where the women first undressed and were then shorn with a few snips. I made piles. All the objects were sorted, classified. Poor Jews from Warsaw, from the ends of Europe. Crockery, fountain pens, photos of children. Each object was a sorrow, a life with a maze of joys, hopes, a dead life. We walked round the brick building. The guards raised their whips and clubs, and I too began to rush to the stretchers, which they were indicating. We ran towards the broad open doors on the side of the building. Then we saw the bodies, naked, entwined. The bodies were yellow, and blood had dribbled down their faces, from their noses. We copied the others, grabbed the bodies, and ran. We paused in front of prisoners who, armed with pliers, were searching the corpses' mouths and extracting gold teeth and ran over to the grave dug in the yellow sand. At the bottom, prisoners standing on the dead were lining up the bodies. We threw in our first body. So in the exam, what you'll be required to do is using that diary excerpt from the inmate who was present, obviously, when um, bodies were coming from the trains or meeting Jews or coming off the trains, you will need to, for A, identify and briefly explain two forms of systematic violence the Jews and other undesirables had to endure at extermination camps such as Auschwitz. So you look at that excerpt and you find keywords and key phrases which indicate violence towards 
the Jews and other undesirables. And once you find a key word and a key phrase, you elaborate on it. You explain that type of violence and how um, the Jews and undesirables had to endure that type of violence. B, so using the excerpt again, you need to identify one organisation that is represented in this document. You need to describe how this organisation is described and portrayed in the document. So quite clearly, there is only one organisation that is mentioned in this document within those first few lines. So you need to identify the sentence first that mentions them. And then I want you to describe how this organisation is portrayed in the document. So what is revealed in the document about their, acts, their actions, their behaviours, their role, their responsibility, any objects that they may have used on the Jews and undesirables, their relationship to the inmates. So that's what you will jabber on about and explain. And then we finish with C. So again, using this document and your own knowledge, everything that you've done in this Holocaust journal, briefly explain the persecution directed towards the Jewish populations of Eastern Europe by the Nazis. Okay, so using this document, so you might only use a word or a few key phrases from it, but you need to be able to write for me how the Jews were persecuted. So how were they harassed and bullied and intimidated? How were they physically harmed? How were they tortured? How were they oppressed? Can you think of any events? Can you think of any laws or any policies that they had to endure? So remembering what you've learnt in your Holocaust journal and this document, you need to extend yourself and explain how the Jews were persecuted. Lucky last, how can I best prepare for my history examination? Step one, practice your multiple choice questions. Go to that Kahoot link that Miss G's put on the Facebook page, play the Kahoot game, and at least 30 of those 70 questions will be on the exam. And by doing that, you're reminding yourself about all the topics and information that we've learned over the past four months. Step two, obviously you've watched this. Go back and quickly stop at the part of the movie which shows the picture and look at that picture and try and draft in your head some of the responses that you'll say. And again, step three, go back in this clip, listen, watch, what's said about the written document and start thinking what you could jot down. Best of luck, kids. One last go. Do your best.